the T to the T to the Brewing Table Talk. Hi, I'm Charisma. I'm Jalen. And I'm Cameron. And welcome to Brewing Table Talk. Today, we have some very special guests. We are so excited to have back on our show our former members of MTAD. And our special guests today are Lauren Miller and Michaela Onyanwede. Hey, y'all. Hi. Hey. So, yes, Lauren and Michaela are both UCLA alumni class of 2021. Currently, Lauren is the assistant director of the Bruin Varsity Club here at UCLA and Michaela is in the WNBA and recently won the 2021 Rookie of the Year. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? You look good. How's everything going? Hi, it's so good to see y'all faces virtually. I'm so proud of what y'all have done with MTAT so far and I miss y'all, but I'm looking forward to see what y'all continue to do with this. Yeah, honestly, I miss you guys so much. Cam and Charisma clutch with lunch today. So I'm obviously not far, but like Michaela said, I'm just super proud of you guys and just seeing you guys run with the torch from what we started last year. Yes, we miss you guys a lot. So let's get started. Okay, so although you guys have both graduated from UCLA, how do you guys continue to live out the mission statement that we created for MTAD in your lives now? I think for me, um, obviously being in a league of, you know, Black women who have stood for so much, it's so easy to, you know, kind of carry that torch into the WNBA in my career right now. Um, just they stand for so much. And every single day we have to advocate for ourselves as Black women. Um, being a league of 70% Black women, like that's what we have to do. And um, just like last week, we we're advocating for trans youth. And the mission statement of MTAD was that we're going to be a cornerstone of change for, you know, everybody to feel the way they want to feel in their authentic self. And I feel like the WNBA represents that in every single facet. So I've had, you know, a great time and a great transition due to this group of just continuing to live out that mission. Yeah, and for me, even just getting to still be in athletics and still work for UCLA, my biggest just impact of working with MTAB was just learning and more so realizing the platform that athletics is and just the people that you're going to encounter and work with. And so um, as much as I'm excited to be doing the development work that I'm doing, I'm even more excited to just um meet people of different backgrounds people who don't have the same exposure that we do to black communities um just kind of begin to plant seeds in that and even begin to branch off and continue these conversations continue what MTAT was for our women's basketball program and the basketball community and see where it can grow and blossom throughout the athletic community as a whole love to hear that love to hear that and like speaking of continuing like what we started last year with MTAD like what is one of like the biggest messages that MTED taught you that you hope to carry on through the years? I would say, I think just in our education series and um, just in the conversations we have with our teammates, just how many people, they want to be allies, they want to learn, they want to grow, but they just don't know where to start. There's just, there's the timidity, there's fear, and there's just so much uncertainty behind things. And so I think it's opened me up just to being more willing to enter in those conversations first and kind of prompt people to have those conversations and to enter in those scary spaces more so because we saw that with our teammates and just, they want to help, they want to come alongside us, but what does that look like? And so I think it helped me kind of want to challenge myself in that and to be the first one to put myself out there and to kind of prompt people to grow and challenge them in that way. Yeah, I completely agree with Lauren in a completely different way, not a completely different way, but in a little bit of a different way. And that MTAD kind of helped me find my voice. Um, I wasn't really somebody who was really big on speaking on issues. I kind of just stayed in my lane, but I figured that through all the things that were happening with you know, George Floyd's, Floyd's murder and um, just the social unrest that we had in the pandemic, like it was no reason for me to be quiet. There was no reason for me to be silent. And I had to use my voice and I had to use my platform, not only as an athlete, but as a black woman. And so that just MTAD, everything that MTAD was really helped me find my voice and you know, speak and be unapologetically in what I believed in. And I don't think I would have done that without MTAD um, wholeheartedly. And so, you know, I, I'm really, really grateful for this group. And not just because you guys are on the, on the, on the video right now, but like really, really uh, helped me find my voice in certain things. That's awesome, super powerful. Um, so is there anything that you didn't get a chance to do last year in MTAD that you hope to see MTAD do in the future? Yes, we were in the pandemic for all of MTAD. So like, I mean, just like the community outreach, we were kind of stunted in what we wanted to do. 
Um, we were kind of just limited to Zoom, which was great, but being able to have that like personal interaction with, you know, little black girls, and little black boys would be really, really cool. And um, as the world is opening up and the pandemic is kind of lessening, it's really, really cool to be able to see that you guys have that opportunity, you know, and maybe not now, but maybe in the future to be able to go out and impact people's lives in person. And so that's one thing I really, really wish uh, we were able to do. But again, our impact went so much further, even though we were just um, on Zoom and on video and kind of just in a locked up world. Yeah, no, I totally agree with Michaela. I remember just in some of our earlier meetings and just the conversations that we would have with each other, just understanding that there's so many little girls and boys who look like us, but you don't get to see people who look like you doing some of the things we did. And not even just in an athletic sense, but we would talk about just the opportunity to go to college, to really um, tackle academics and music and just things that you're not really taught for some communities, just what you can accomplish. And so I'm so excited to see you guys get to enter in those communities and just really impact lives like we really wanted to. That's really what it was all about for us and that the education was great and the everything we had to do in-house was cool, but like the biggest thing was like, we wanted to mentor and really come alongside people and kind of help them know and blow winds into their sales of what all you can accomplish with or without sports, but just because of who you are and who you were made to be. Yeah, I think we're all really excited to kind of just get out into the community this year. Uh, I know that we've been planning things and hopefully we'll have some things lined up soon. So we're super excited about that. Um, we'll keep you guys updated for sure. Um, but I just want to say that Michaela, Lauren, you guys are both two powerful Black women that inspire me. And I'm grateful to have you guys as friends and to have had you guys as teammates. So speaking of powerful Black women, what is your favorite thing about being a Black woman? What do you love the most about it? Oh, okay. That's a, that's a good question. That's a hard question, but because I think there's so much, you know, and I feel like me and Michaela will talk about this sometimes, just like the culture and just the sisterhood that is just naturally given. And like, you might connect on different points and build deeper with other women, but just there's so many consistencies between even seeing tweets of things that like you do in your childhood and you don't realize all of us did the same thing we all got whooped for the same reasons <laughs> and I, that's that's so powerful to me you know to have those shared experiences and like you could be in a space where there's only one person that looks like you and you don't know her but you know if anything happens like you got her back and she has yours and I think that's just something so cool and something I've really learned to cherish as I've gotten older yeah, completely. Um, and I would also just say like the dynamic of being a black woman. Uh, we have just so many different sides to us and we're so multifaceted. And there's not one story, one person that's the same, but like Lauren said, we all connect in some way. And I love that even in this group, like we're all so different, but I'm sure we have so many different, so many of the same kind of experiences because of you know the, the way we look. And so I love that about just being in the black community, but especially being a black woman. And there's so many things that like, against us in this world um, that we have to fight for, fight through. Um, that sometimes is unfair, but we always find a way. And that resiliency is something that kind of resides in Black women in general, kind of resides in our nature. And that always is so powerful and so impactful. But we also have so many different sides that is really inspiring. And I'm proud to be a, a, in the club, as people say. Um, I love being a Black woman. I love being a part of the Black community. And it's just really, really powerful. Yes, y'all love y'all number one and definitely love being a black woman i just love how we support each other too because if i see other black women doing great things i'm gonna be right there biggest fan i don't even <laughs> have to know you period period but we have reached the fun part of this uh our favorite time the fun questions so i'm gonna start it off what is the most exciting thing you've done since graduating Hmm. Um, <laughs> for me, it's, you know, being in the WBA, <laughs> it's so fun. I just, being a professional is so, so, so just exciting every day, just meeting new people. But then, like I said, we stand for so much, something so much bigger than ourselves. Um, and then I get to play the game that I love, you know, with so many awesome people and an awesome league. And yeah, I just had a really, really fun rookie year. And so looking forward to, you know, next year for sure. I guess for me, aside from my girl's trip to go see Michaela in New York, um, I actually had the opportunity with one of our other program alumni, Kelly Hayes, to go speak and Purdue Fort Wayne to their women's basketball team and some of their other um, athletic faculty. And it was just really cool just to 
not only share on like a student athlete perspective, but we got to kind of talk into some race and how do you work that into a culture that's kind of divided. So it was a really great learning experience and it's definitely what I kind of want to do career wise. So it was a good stepping stone. I think both of y'all being super modest, super modest, WBA, going to Indiana. Come on, you got come on, y'all better. <laughs> okay. Number two. Have y'all found any new hobbies that y'all are interested in? I don't know that I would say I found it, but I got to really get back into photography for a bit. I was working obviously with you guys for a bit. So I got to really work on that and video work. And I got to shoot Michaela's late senior photo shoot on campus. So it's just been cool to get to dig back into that and kind of get back into what used to be a really big passion. First off, don't do me, okay. But yes, Miss Lauren Miller did do my grab pictures and they look beautiful. Um, but for me, I don't know if there's a new hobby per se, but obviously I moved to Brooklyn, super, super rich culture and tradition in Brooklyn. And so I wouldn't say if it's a hobby, but I've just been able to like explore Brooklyn so much and like do things that I haven't even done in LA and Colorado um, and just kind of experience Brooklyn in its fullest extent, just in like a matter of like five months. And so like, I love Brooklyn, love being there, love the city, love the people. And so like, that's what I would say me, my hobby is like exploring Brooklyn at the moment. Um, but yeah, I just love it, love it so far. We took Mick on her first subway ride, y'all, and she did. She did. It was it was all right, you know. It's different. It's real different. <laughs> okay, so Lauren, you mentioned a little while ago that you went on a girl trip to visit Michaela in New York. So we decide we're going on another girl's trip. Where are we traveling to? Oof. I feel like I gotta go with Jamaica, like sun, the swimsuits, pina coladas, no alcohol, because we're all still athletes, you know, but just the vibes and I could just imagine it'd be a good time. You know, what's crazy is literally Lauren took my answer. I've been wanting to go to Jamaica for so long. Um, my aunt and uncle went on their honeymoon and like the pictures were ridiculous. And so Jamaica for sure. So when y'all ready and y'all have y'all passports and y'all have y'all funds in order, Let's I'm book, ready to go. Not spirit, Jalen, but book the flight. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> not spirit. You heard her here. Not spirit. Not spirit. <laughs> I heard y'all. I heard y'all. First off, y'all didn't have to do my girl like that. And second of all, Y'all got to say the word. I done been. I know the spots. I know where to go. Just tell me when y'all ready. <laughs> I'm always down. So just say the word. Say the word. <laughs> okay. So last question. What is the best TV show or movie that you've watched in the past couple of months? Dang, that's a hard question. I'm going to say, I'm going to say you or manifest I, I literally so what you came out whenever like last week and I already finished finished it wild manifest was really good too I loved that watching a couple months ago and I'm gonna go with one more too in the dark um that's a really good show all on Netflix um I love Netflix Netflix sponsor me um but yeah those three hashtag ad um hashtag ad. <laughs> for me 911 is back on TV and they came with some heat these first couple episodes already. So that's probably gonna be what I'm resting my hat on. They got some horror movies coming out. So I said I go see them, but the Marvel movies that came out, they also understood the assignment. So either way, I'm good to go. Yeah, you guys have some great shows, great movies there. Definitely gotta watch some of those for sure. But we have come to the end of our Bruin Table Talk. And I just want to say, I appreciate having you guys on. It was so great to have you guys back. Obviously, you guys are on the other side now, but it was really fun having you guys. We miss you a lot. We love you, and we appreciate you. Uh, and you guys. Love you guys. Thank you guys. And like both of them, thank y'all so much. We miss y'all. Please come back and visit us all the time. We love y'all so much. And like always, go Bruins. <laughs>